What's going on YouTube? W here back with another RuneScape guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at Winter Tot, the fire making skilling boss. So let's jump right into it. Alright, for your equipment you're going to need some warm clothing. There are tons of warm clothing inside RuneScape. The easiest ones being to get is over in Draenor Village from the Holiday Event Item Trader. He will give you the Santa's outfit, which counts as warm clothing, as well as a couple, a couple other outfits he has also counts. It's free, and I would just pick up some clothes from him to start until you end up getting the Pyromancer's outfit from the Winter Tot boss, which is what I'll be wearing. I'll also be bringing along a Tome of Fire from the boss, which counts as a warm item, my Fire Cape, a Dragon Axe, and a Light Bearer's Ring to always make sure I can use my spec every kill. For your inventory, you'll want to make sure that you have a knife if you intend on fletching the logs. I'll get into more of that in a minute. A hammer for repairing the braziers. More on that as well. And a tinder box for lighting the braziers. More on that in just a minute. For your food, I'm going to be bringing along some jugs of wine, as you will be taking damage inside the Winter Tot boss room. The jugs of wine heal for 11 health are, and are incredibly cheap. I recommend anybody using these. It is worth noting that the Winter Tot does deal HP-based damage on you, so having health lower than 99 is incredibly advised, guys. I will be taking a bunch of damage here, 10 HP being the optimal amount of HP to have for subduing this boss. Let's talk about the boss's location. The Winter Tot is located at the northernmost sector of Zaya. A great way to get there is using the Games Necklace Winter Tot Teleport. If you don't have access to that, using the fairy ring code CIS and running slightly north is also a great way to get here. And if you don't have access to either of those, coming down this way to the boats, the port of Piscarillus, you can take a boat from Port Sarum and just go ahead and run all the way up through the town to the north, through the next city, and continue running north until you reach the Winter Tot Camp. Once you're at the Winter Tot, you can go ahead and enter through the Doors of Din. This starting room right here is safe. You will take no tick damage from the boss while inside this area. There are also supply crates containing all of the items you'll need to defeat the boss. You have axes, concoction crates full of potions, uh, hammers, some knives, another concoction crate full of potions, and a tinderbox crate. The concoction crates are used to create a rejuvenation potion. Here, I'll go ahead and make one now. You'll grab one potion from the wall or from the crate, and then you'll run all the way to the wall over here to these sprouting roots. These sprouting roots will then be picked and combined with the rejuvenation potion unfinished to create a rejuvenation potion, which can be used on the pyromancers during the fight when they are damaged. The hammers will be used for repairing the braziers during the boss fight. I recommend everyone having that one of them in their bag, as it also awards construction XP for fixing the braziers. In the next crate we have knives. Knives are also recommended for every kill as they allow you to fletch the logs. Fletching the logs will allow in more points per kill. More points is more rewards. A slightly slower XP per hour for fletching the logs, but you will end up getting more rewards per kill. Moving on. The next crate contains tinder boxes. Tinder boxes is pretty self-explanatory. They are used for lighting the braziers back on fire. And finally, the last crate, the axes. The axes are used for chopping the bruma roots. It's essential. Everyone has to have an axe. It's not really a choice here. For mechanics for the boss, it is super simple. Once inside the boss room, you will continuously, well, not continuously, but you will occasionally, every so often, receive tick damage to your HP. You can reduce the amount of this tick damage by having more warm clothing on, or less warm clothing if you want to take more damage. I currently am taking, I believe, 6 damage per tick from the storm. Every so often during the fight, you will see a snowfall begin to fall on the brassiere. That means that the brassiere is about to be damaged and broken. A broken brassiere can be repaired with the hammers, rewarding you for 25 points. You can also then relight the brassiere for an additional 25 points. Giant chunks of snow will also occasionally fall around the room, damaging the players for a large portion of their health. You can avoid this damage by either moving away from the snowfall or standing in one of the corner locations while feeding the braziers or while chopping the bruma roots. 
All right, now that you've got the mechanic basics down and what is expected inside the fight, let's go ahead and just do a live kill real quick, guys. I do much better at explaining while the kills are live, I feel like, personally. So let's just go ahead and run in and start that. We have 10 seconds till the next one is going. All right, let's run up to the brazier before it starts. You'll see up here in the top left corner we have three, two. So let's go ahead and start clicking the brazier before the game starts so we can get the light points. There we go, 25 points for lighting. Go ahead and pop a spec on your Dragon Warhammer if you have one and move to one of the safe spots. You can see right here the snowfall is coming. Boom, safe, didn't get hit. This is a broom a safe spot for chopping, as is this one. You will never get hit by the snowfalls there. Highly recommend standing in one of them, guys. All right, as your bag is filling up, you can either fletch your Bruma roots over here for some kindling, or you can just go ahead and throw them in the brazier for some points. I have the Winter Tot uh, plug-in activated at the top of my screen, and as you can see, for not fletching, I will get 160 points, and for fletching, I will get 400 points out of this inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and fletch this one to make sure I get to the 500-point mark. After taking the damage, you will need to start fletching the logs again, or if you were putting them into the brazier at the time, you will need to start reigniting the brazier and putting your logs into it to damage Wintertot. Anytime you take damage, you will stop your actions, unless you are cutting Bruma roots. Alright, now that point's made across, let's go ahead and just start filling the brazier with our kindling and damaging the Wintertot boss, slowly but surely. We got hit there, so we stopped feeding it. Continue feeding him again. And you can see our points are going up slowly but surely. We are meeting the quota. We're at 200 points left in the bag right now. 250 we've earned, so we are easily going to make the quota for this match. You have to reach 500 points every kill in order to obtain a reward from uh, Winter Tot. I keep wanting to say Temporos. I made that guide recently, guys. Bear with me if I say Temporos. But anyways, you want to have the 500 points for receiving a rewards crate. Every 500 points after that, you will receive an additional supply crate from the boss. And anything in between, so let's say you scored 750 points. You won't earn an additional supply crate, but you do earn an additional chance on the crate you do get for another roll. That might have been a little confusing, I said that weird. You basically get another chance at a roll on the crate that you, that you own. Um, it's pretty nice, pretty handy, so I recommend always, if you have time going over 500 points, it doesn't hurt you. You might as well and go for it. You can get another roll out of the chest if you're lucky. Um, I've taken quite a bit of damage here, but not too much, as you can see, guys. I'm just feeding it still and getting hit with chip damage. No other special effects have really gone off this time. The... Pyromancers over here occasionally will go down, and if they go down, you need to use a potion of rejuvenation on them and heal them. Super easy. Normally, someone in the lobby has it. Oh, here we go. The brazier's breaking. I kind of missed the snow effect. We'll go ahead and light it and uh, repair it for some bonus points. There we go. Not bad, not bad. All right, we're sitting at 635 points total. We're going to have a nice little rewards chest this time. Only 9% left. Let's go burn these logs real quick in case we get hit with a couple stops. Alright, alright. Looking good, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and drink this, these jugs of wine. Just run over here and uh, fill up my HP as we're waiting for the kill to end. That way I can make it back in time for the next round as well. Alright, and you see right there I received 8,800 experience points for defeating Winter Todd. You will receive 100 times your fire-making skill level um, in uh, XP at the very end of defeating. So I have a fire-making skill of level 88, so I received 8,800 XP for defeating him. Supply crates out. Open them up and see what we get from them. All right, first one. Anything good? We'll just fly through them. We won't, we won't drag it out. Let's see. Open them all up. All right, so we got some pyromancer garbs, a couple salt pyres, nothing too crazy, guys. Let's throw it in the value and see what it's sitting at. So from just a couple kills, we're sitting at 100k worth of loot from Winter Tot. Not bad. Not too good. Not too bad, though, honestly. 100k is more than I was expecting. Uh, it's also amazing XP per hour. I was getting 275,000 XP an hour here for the kills that I've been doing. Uh, amazing little boss. I love this thing. I had a good time. 
It's a good first 99 for any account. It's a quick one to get out of the way, and you'll get a ton of supplies along the way as well. But, uh, yeah, that's all I have for my Winter Tot Guide. Guys, thank you all for sticking around and watching it with me. If you have any questions or comments, let me down, know down in the comments down below. I'd be happy to help you. Or if I missed something completely, just go ahead and say it in the comments too. Call me dumb and then uh, let everybody else know what I missed to help them out. I know they'll greatly appreciate it. And uh, peace out, guys. Game on, my friends, and I'll see you next time.